you're um, in probably one of the most haunted places in the world because of the things that are in here. Ed and Lorraine Warren were paranormal investigators and authors associated with prominent cases of hauntings throughout the United States. From the Amityville Horror to the haunting in Connecticut, they worked closely to prove something paranormal was at play. Stories of ghost hauntings popularized by the Warrens have since been adapted into dozens of films, particularly The Conjuring Universe. However, the legitimacy of the pair has always caused debate, with many quick to label them as frauds. So today on Top 5 Scary Videos, I'm going to be counting down our list of the Top 5 Scary Ed and Lorraine Warren Paranormal Urban Legends. Before we begin though, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. And with that, let's jump in. Coming in at number 5, Union Cemetery. Union Cemetery is located near Stepney Road in Eastern Connecticut. The site dates back to the 1700s and according to Ghost Hunters, it is one of the most haunted cemeteries in the entire United States. Now as you'd expect, Ed and Lorraine Warren were quick to involve themselves in the mystery surrounding the cemetery, with the pair even writing a book about the site entitled Graveyard. According to popular legends, the White Lady Ghost haunts Union Cemetery, as well as Stepney Cemetery in Monroe. The White Lady has been seen walking in front of people's cars as they drive along Route 59, late at night. Concerned drivers believed that they had hit a person, exit their vehicles only to discover there was no one there. The White Lady name comes from witnesses who states that she wore either a white gown or what appeared to be a wedding dress. Now in 1990, Ed and Lorraine Warren set up cameras in the cemetery to record the investigation investigation. Around 2.40 a.m. they heard the sound of a woman weeping, and a female form had begun to move several feet in their direction. As Ed began to approach her, she vanished from sight. Nowadays, the cemetery is known to close after sunset. Coming in at number 4, we have the werewolf in London. Bill Ramsey from Southend-on-Sea in England was considered living proof that werewolves actually exist. Now, the first inkling of trouble for Bill came when he was just 9 years old. One day, he was outside in his garden playing when he began to feel strange. An icy blast swept all over him. Perspiration froze on his skin and a foul stench made him need to vomit. Then, out of nowhere, anger and rage took over and young Bill uprooted a fence post, with the fence still attached, and began swinging it around like a club. Should be noted that not even his parents could remove that fence post. Now, all returned to normal for a while. Ramsey grew up, became a loving husband and father of three, and was instant free up until the 1960s. During this time, he began to be plagued by nightmares, cold sweats, and waking up panting like a wild animal. Not long after, he began to feel the same sensations he had that day in the garden when he was nine. And on one occasion, he attacked a friend in a car on their way from a pub and manhandled police on several occasions. In turn, Ramsey was forced to spend time in the hospital where it was noted that he exhibited inhuman strength, growling, and his hands would often curl like claws. Ed and Lorraine Warren were thus called in to investigate. Ed Warren stated that, I quote, Ramsey would ask to be locked up in jail cell for his protection and the protection of the public. The Warrens then invited Ramsey to their Connecticut home, where Bishop Robert McKenna would perform a recorded exorcism on Ramsey. Coming in at number three, we have the Enfield Poltergeist. Between the years of 1977 and 1979, the Enfield poltergeist terrorized a small London house in the Enfield suburb. The case involved two sisters, aged 11 and 13. In August 1977, single parent Peggy Hodgson called police to her home, claiming she had witnessed furniture moving and that two of her four children said that knocking sounds were heard on their walls. The children included Margaret, who was 13 at the time, and Janet, who was 11. A police officer who investigated the scene recalled seeing a chair wobble and slide, but could not determine the cause of movement. Later, claims included disembodied voices, overturned chairs, and the children even levitating. Over the next year and a half, more than 30 people said that they saw heavy furniture moving on its own accord, objects being thrown around the room, and the children levitating. These people included psychic researchers, neighbors, and journalists. Creepier still, the young daughter to Janet was also recorded speaking in a deep masculine voice, which was believed to be the spirit of an old man. Of course, the Warrens were called in to investigate this paranormal behavior, which they found was a case of demonic possession. Janet later went on to admit that she had played with a Ouija board prior to the disturbances, and that she was unaware that she fell into the trances until she saw photographs later on. However, many have called the Enfield poltergeist fake, with Janet being detected in trickery, with a video camera catching her bending spoons and attempting to bend an iron bar. So whatever you believe is up to you, legend or reality. 
Coming in at number two, we have the Smell family. The Smell haunting refers to claims made by Jack and Janet Smell, who alleged that a demon inhabited their home between 1974 and 1989. The family moved to West Pittson, Pennsylvania with their young daughters and Jack's parents, who all lived together in one house, and supposedly suffered the worst 13 years of their entire lives. Not long after moving into their new home, they claimed that the premises was disturbed by a demon that caused loud noises and bad odors. Threw their dog into a wall, shut their mattress, pushed one of their daughters down a flight of stairs, and physically and sexually assaulted Jack on several occasions. The family were terrified and called in Ed and Lorraine Warren for help. The pair quickly discovered that the family home was infested with four spirits, an elderly woman who was harmless, an old man who had died at the house, a young and violent girl, and a demon that controlled the other spirits and had turned them against the family. By 1987, the family decided to leave the home once and for all, and two years later, a church sanctioned exorcism took place there, and the property was cleared of all paranormal activity. And finally, coming in at number one, we have the Amityville Horror. The Amityville Horror is perhaps one of the, if not the most famous paranormal cases Ed and Lorraine Warren investigated. However, like the rest of our list, there is always debate as to how much was actually true. Some backstory to begin though, on November 13th, 1974, at 3.15am, Ronald DeFeo Jr. killed his parents and siblings with a rifle while they were sleeping peacefully in their beds. Around a year later, the Lutz family moved into the home on Ocean Drive. However, after just 28 days, the Lutzes left the house, claiming to have been terrorized by paranormal phenomena while living there. Supposedly, during their time living there, a priest was called in to bless the home, and he warned the family, do not use the upstairs room as a bedroom, and do not let anyone sleep in there. Within days, things began to go wrong for the happy family. Their young daughter made an imaginary friend with a red-eyed pig. Foul odors filled each room, furniture moved and levitated, and banging would frequently be heard throughout the house at night, in turn forcing the family to flee. Enter Ed and Lorraine Warren. The pair investigated the house and soon discovered that the land the house had been built on had previously been used by a practicing black magician who had requested to be buried on the land, and he remains there to this day. A TV crew was also called in to film the investigation, with them snapping a photo that seemed to show a boy with glowing eyes. In a 2013 interview, Lorraine Warren said that the Amityville house was the one case that haunted her the most. She also went on to state during a press conference for the Conjuring, I quote, Amityville was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. It followed us straight across the country. I will never go to the Amityville house ever again. Whether you believe the story or not, something certainly spooked the Warrens enough to never return there again. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any paranormal legends that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part two. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos. Top five scary forgotten horror movies from the 2000s. Panzer4 1976 said, you're getting me through COVID. Thank you. Stay safe. You're very welcome. If it weren't for me, you'd be bored. Astra Hayes said, Trick or Treat will always hold a special place in my heart. I completely agree. I might watch it tonight. Jesse Harland said, Session 9 is one of my favorite movies ever. Exactly. Mine too, which is why I put it on nearly every single one of my lists. Icarus the Fox Kid said, It really wouldn't surprise me if Lucy was a wolf in a pale human skin. Honestly, I think you've cracked the case. <laughs> Heather, Heather, and Heather said, Why is there a small Sasha in the creepy Lucy pick now? I feel like this is turning into the painting from the witches. First of all, there are so many references in this post, so let's start with Heather, Heather, and Heather. Great film. If you don't get the reference, please leave and never talk to me again. The Witches is one of my favorite films, so respect. And also, Sasha has always been in that picture. I don't believe she's getting closer, but she could be. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary vid. And until next time, see you later.